In our last video, we used the simplex method to solve a maximization and minimization problem. So today we're going to look at, um, uh, let's say, transportation problem. Okay, so we have warehouses and we have um, restaurants that we need to supply items from the warehouses to the various um, restaurants. So as an example, let's take this. Say Big Grace Tilapia is a chain of four tilapia restaurants. They buy their two kilogram tilapia at three different locations. So since the spot prices and transport transportation costs differ from location to location, the manager made a table of possible profits each restaurant will get by purchasing tilapia from each location. The table also includes the maximum supply of each location and the demands of each joint. So this is the table that we have. So we have the units, the profit per tilapia, that is per unit. So every tilapia costs, um, let's say, five cities. If you are taking it from location one to restaurant one, so that different restaurants have their different prices depending on where the tilapia is coming from whether it's coming from the warehouse one, warehouse two, or warehouse three. So let's name this as uh, warehouse one, or just W1, so in short. Warehouse one, warehouse two, warehouse three, so that we can uh, relate very well. So how do we solve this? We used northwest corner manually to do this operation. We use the maximum uh, method, and we use the least cost method. The graphical method we use that in solving um, other maximization problems earlier. So we are today we're going to use the simplex method again to try to solve the transportation problem. So let's get this in. Let's copy this out of here so that we can have our solution separate. So as you can see here, I'm just I mean, all right. So this we have, and what am I going to do? I'm going to again get this out of here and put here. This will be our unit um, profit per unit and this will be the volume. Now volume I mean the quantity. Okay. So this will be how much we are going to. So call that the volume or quantity. And then we shift this a little down. Take this to the right a little. So what we need to do here is to find totals. So I'm going to find, um, let's say, total for the total supplied from warehouse one, and then here requirements again. So total supplied. Then I come to this one and say I want requirements. All right. So the requirement is going to be the sum of these, sum, sum, sum all of them, and then the total um, supply to, is going to be the sum that the total of whatever came out of warehouse one to the various restaurants. So let's do the summation. Now let's say I'm going to have this one one or two. It's not going to be the same. We'll take it off for solver to give us the solution. But if I do this and select it including the total where I want the totals to be without putting anything there. All I have to do right now is to press my Alt key on the keyboard plus the plus sign and that will give me the totals that I want. Alright, so now I can take this off and say I don't need anything to be here. What would be the total? So let's call this total profit. What would be the total profit? The total profit is going to be this cell multiplied by this cell. What do we mean by that? Warehouse 1, when you give to restaurant 1, I get a profit of 5 cents per tilapia. So how many is uh, coming from warehouse 1 to warehouse, sorry, restaurant number 1? So if it is 3, then the profit I'm going to make at the end of the day is going to be 5 multiplied by 3 in restaurant number 3, provided the tilapia came from uh, warehouse number one. That is what I mean. So, to do this, again, I'm going to 
multiply this one after the other and add them again which is very very tedious so in short we are going to use again our sum product formula in excel so we say equals to sum product then we select the profits that is the profits per setup here per unit let me call it that way so we select this one and then we say comma we are going to select the corresponding volumes here and close our bracket press our enter key and this is the sum it will sum multiply them um, corresponding to where the cells are here and then add them afterwards again let me make this give this a color like i did in the last time and then give this one to a different color okay so let's say this is our changing cell so let's color it a little bit all right and add um, borders to them so you can see them clearly and border okay this i don't need border but i'll still add it anyway so this these cells you're seeing here are going to be changing to give me the uh, maximum profit that i want right here so now let's go to data and choose over all right so right now i'm going to take this off we already have our time so this is what we did the previous time and all these games so we don't need any of this i'm going to delete them all of them so we can have our own so here we have maximized and we want a profit and nobody is looking for the minimum profit we want the maximum profit that we can get out of our business so the objective function right here is going to be our total here total profit that we have calculated right here so i'm going to click on that one make sure your maximization is intact then you come to the change itself now you remember the change itself we had before was in the objective function now our change cells are going to be this in the volumes here so we select the highlighted portion um, and then add our constraints what are the constraints we have Two constraints right here the supply constraint and the demand constraint what is the supply constraint now in warehouse number one they have 300 but then it is not compulsory that you supply all these it depends on how much we want so where you are going to do the supplies they depend on the destinations so it is possible that all these um, amounts of this number of tilapia in the various warehouses so we could supply all of the restaurants they will get what they want and we still have something left okay so in that case we say it's not balanced it is balanced when we have the equal number of supply and demands at the end of the day so let's add our constraint here i'm adding the first one which is my um, supply constraint so the summations that i had here now this is not part of it this is not going to be I have only three warehouses so i select the three warehouses and i'm going to say that this should be less or equals to you that means you can supply all or you can supply less but make sure the demand is satisfied so less or equals to i take those three add it then the second one is that the requirements that we are looking at here should be equals to not less than not greater than should be exactly what we can in our um, storage capacity uh, storage yes, capacity of the restaurant and I'm going to say OK now and the two constraints are added simplest method select sim simplest method if you are doing it for the first time it is going to be GRG not linear as the default but then we need to change that and make sure that make on constraint variables not negative you mark that that is because we cannot produce a product without materials so definitely either you don't have or you have you don't have negative materials after you're done with all these you can now click on solve and wait for this to happen and the message that came back says solver found a solution all constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied if you want a detailed report of this and the sensitivity analysis you can select all these ones and tell excel to give it to you and you will see them displayed as tabs below here all right so you can write your comprehensive report out of that analysis 
right now we are only interested in how much do we supply from which warehouse to which restaurant so let's keep the results and check it out our profit is going to be 6400 if we are going to use the simplex method to perform this analysis now warehouse number one is able to provide warehouse uh, restaurant number two 200 units and again give to restaurant number three hundred of that now this is what you can use to draw let's say a network we could draw the network map to represent this particular scenario so let's say if um, I'm not so good at drawing so I'm just going to put them like this okay so I'll put here restaurant number one restaurant number two number three and then restaurant number four so for warehouse number one let's put that right here warehouse number one so you provide warehouse restaurant number two how many units 200 units again the same warehouse we supply to r3 100 units then we come to the second warehouse so warehouse number two let's put it right here whom are you going to supply to so we give to one how much are we giving to one 200 how much are we giving to two we give 50 to warehouse number two 50 not 20 then we jump all the way to warehouse number four and give them 150 what about warehouse number three so let's put warehouse number three right here and say that okay warehouse number three you give to warehouse number three so we have this right here how much 250 so this is how our network would have